Okay, good afternoon Jukebox fans. It's uh, it's another Saturday afternoon, I've got a couple of hours to kill. So welcome to part three of probably many, um, where I'm going to be tackling another one of the motors on this thing. Um, had a go at the gripper motor the other day, um, but the carousel motor is also a little bit on the sticky side. Um, there's four motors in total on this thing. You've got the gripper motor, the carousel, the turntable platter itself, and the read-in, write-out carriage motor thing. But uh, going to have a look at the carousel motor and see what kind of state that's in. So to get a decent look at the carousel, you actually need to get behind it. And if we look down here, I'll just grab the light. You can see that's the beast there. You should be able to see there's a couple of bolts there holding it on. And slightly worryingly, there's a third bolt hole and the bolt is missing. That tells me that I'm not the first one to have a bit of a fiddle about with this. So I think it's probably a good idea to get this motor off and see what kind of state it's in. Now, unlike the gripper motor, this one is nowhere near as easy to get at, so we need the uh, proper socket set on it to even get a chance of getting this thing undone. We just get that in. There we go. Right, will it undo? I think I'm tightening that the wrong way. Hang up. Yeah, I've got that in the end. Lefty Lucy, righty tighty. Welcome to Amateur Hour at the Jukebox Repair Shop. That's got it. And out comes the motor. Possibly something to come through. There we go. One carousel motor, which unplugs from there. Okay, so this is the uh, carousel motor removed from the jukebox. Um, first thing I'd say about it is I would say that it's pretty much identical to the gripper motor. It looks like the exact same gearbox unit, slightly different cog on the end of it, but the gearbox itself looks identical. What doesn't look identical is the actual body of the motor. As you can see, this is a lot smaller, and you'll notice it is actually branded as a Rockola motor, which does give some credence to the idea that... Uh, Somebody did say on the jukebox forum the other day when I was having some trouble with the gripper motor they didn't think that was an original motor body and they reckon that the bottom half, this bit, was had been bodged on from some other similar but not quite identical motor which would explain why the, um, the screw drive into that nylon gear wheel didn't fit properly. Could be, who knows. But uh, this one doesn't feel too bad. I'm just turning this by hand and it does spin. There's a bit of resistance there but I'm sure with a bit of a Regrease and a clean up, it could be better than it is. We'll get it apart, we'll have a look. So, on the back of it here, you can see there's two bolts that hold the guts of it together. So, we'll undo that. And that one. And there's also this little capacitor that's bolted on the side, I think that's there, just to provide a bit of uh, suppression. So I'll just take that off so it's uh, not in the way. Undo these two. Oh, it's a much longer screw on this one. There we go. Right, let's see if the wants to give up its secrets. Here we go. What have we got? Do you know what? That's actually not too bad. That's back end of it looks nice and clean. Let's have a closer look inside. see in the lights but uh, there's a fair bit of carbon muck in there that wants uh, brushing out. So just looking at this armature here it actually looks in a lot better condition than the one on the gripper. You can see the wire has still got that sort of decent sort of copper colour to it. Uh, the commutator looks okay but it'll probably benefit from uh, just getting a paintbrush between those gaps and make sure there's no carbon deposits in there because that can foul things up. Um, the uh, body bit that contains the carbon brushes, that's quite sooted up. So, uh, our old friend, a dry paintbrush will get rid of some of that built up crud in there. Oh, you can see that's starting to come out already. Can't really do this one handed while holding a phone, so uh, I'll get on with this. You can actually see the brushes at the end here. They're not as bad as I first thought. There's uh, 
There's some there's definitely plenty of play left in that one. That one seems to have worn down more. Why one would wear down more than the other, I don't know. But uh, uh, there's enough life in that to keep it going for a bit anyway. Let's get it cleaned up. So I've had a good look at the uh, armature and the commutator, the brushes, everything else. All seems to check it okay, so I put it back together as it was. Um, it all feels to be running freely, so I don't see this is going to be a problem. But I'm just going to open the lid and just check on the uh, gearbox. Let's make sure there's nothing about to go horribly wrong with it. Might as well have a proper look while I've got it out of the machine. And again, just like the other one, just three screws that hold this cap on. Take that off. should just pop out and there we have it same as the other one nylon gear and the motor screw thread on there That's, of course you always hear tales of old grease going horrible but, uh, but do you know what I don't think that even needs messing with that feels seems to be greasy not overly sticky I say, you run it by hand and it feels okay, so I think we'll leave that be. We'll stick the lid back on it and call that okay, I think. So we'll put that together. One carousel motor running freely and nice and shiny. So I think that's ready to put back in. Uh, it's not half as much trouble as I thought it was going to be, but uh, it's always good to check these things out. And there it is, one carousel motor back in position. Well, that's the two most likely things uh, to cause a circuit breaker to pop that have been cleaned and sorted out now. So uh, I think next up, just going to give it a bit of a, a cosmetic clean-up inside, ready for the next job. Yeah, there is decades of dust and grime and grease and general crud. I think a bit of a squirty foam cleaner can help bring it up a bit. Given the mechanism a bit of a clean up, I think next thing to do is uh, turn our attentions to the electrical bits, not least of which all these little contacts here, and all these switches and contacts in there. Time to get the service all out. So I predict that this thing is going to be a source of issues. Um, it's kind of the heart of the whole machine. Um, if you look down here, each one of these little electrical contacts here represents one of the records. Um, and what happens when you put a coin in, you make a selection, um, the first thing it does is convert that selection that you've pressed in into lighting up one of these contacts, which indicates which one you've, you've first selected. And what happens, the voltage will be applied to one of these pins, depending on what number you hit. And there's a little set of wipers on this carriage here. If I just move that forward, you can see there's a little contact wipers that go brushing past it. And the motor will send this carriage around. And when it finds the voltage on the right pin, it will stop. And then there's a little solenoid here, which will click. If I move that back, it will move these little pins. And these little pins here, each one of these, these pairs, is one record. Um, one of them will be side A, the other one will be side B, depending on which one you selected. So once it's selected that pin, it's physically flicked the switch. And that is how you get memory on something that doesn't use chips. It's just a kind of mechanical memory. Um, but obviously for this to work, all those little electrical contacts and those little contact wipers down there, they've got to be spotlessly clean and making perfect contact with all the tracks there. So I think a decent going over with the service hole should uh, ensure that that works. Let's give it a go. This is what I use for uh, cleaning oxidised switch contacts. This is a uh, service hole Super 10. It's very good for this kind of job. Uh, give a bit of that switch cleaner all over the electrical contacts there. Get that nice and wet. And then, uh, I don't know what best to clean this with. I've got some kitchen roll here. Uh, we'll start with that. And I'm hoping that's going to do the job. I'd rather not get too heavy duty with it unless I have to. But we'll just see if that's lifting it up and cleaning it. Yeah, you can see there's some muck on there. So I will try it with this. 
And this kitchen roll turns out not to be strong enough for the job, but I have got somewhere. Where is it? There we go. We have some emery paper, 1000 grit. That's a very, very fine paper. I don't want to take any more of the metallic surface off than I have to. So if the kitchen roll doesn't do it, this will. selection switches there, that's going to need a good clean. Let's do this. And I'm just, uh, just by pressing all these buttons, I was hoping that's going to help get the service hole in where it's needed. Wipe the contacts clean. Now, likewise, on the other side of the wheel, that's the reading carriage. That's the one that detects the position of these switches, and when it reaches one of these switches, it stops and triggers the uh, machine to start loading the record in. So, again, there's a load of wipers and whatnot down there. So, a bit of squirty on there, I think. I'm not overly concerned about getting that really wet, it's not going to do it any harm. No worse than it's been sitting in the back of the shop for 10 years anyway. Right, so that's the mechanical bits given a bit of a clean up. Uh, I thought now we might have a little look at the credit unit. Right, so this is the credit unit that came with the jukebox when I bought it. And uh, it's a, what was it, it's a 51385A. And I was suspicious when I looked inside it. Because uh, if you look, you can see this is all microprocessor controlled. And... I did a bit of research and it turns out this machine is actually from 1977 whereas my jukebox is from 74 and the first jukebox that used one of these I believe was the 468 which was a very similar looking machine to mine but uh, obviously technologically a little bit different and also if you look inside this thing I don't think it would have worked anyway there's like some sort of edge connector socket there with nothing plugged into it we've got a couple of sockets there with nothing plugged in it's been messed about with they've changed the switch on it uh, there's a relay missing from it. I mean these two sockets here fit my jukebox but uh, it's the wrong machine from the wrong year for the wrong jukebox. So I figured probably better get the right one for the job. Fortunately a website called jukeboxparts.co.uk came to the rescue. This is the right credit unit for the job. The uh, numbers match up to what's in the instruction manual that I should have. Looks very similar on the outside but uh, if we look inside it's way more old school. Um, what you've got here is a load of uh, relays and solenoids and clockwork, would you believe it? Now, the way that a credit unit works on these old school machines is when you drop a coin in, depending on the denomination of the coin, you get so many record players for that coin. And the machine has to remember how many coins have gone in and how many plays are still left to go. And it does that using this little gubbins here. Um, it's wound up on a spring. Um, basically when a coin is dropped in it will actuate one of these little solenoid things here so say for example I don't know you press 10p and this thing will engage and it'll and it will release one tooth on it or something like that a 20p will engage a different one and it will oh, I messed that up but it will engage more teeth on it and basically every time this cog clicks round that's another credit so as long as it's got some credits on it if we just wind it up again, that shouldn't have gone round all the way. You can see there's a little, just a little switch there. That just detects if there's no credits because it's at the end of its travel. So as soon as it lets go of a little bit, any position that switch is now open or closed or whatever it is, and then the machine knows that it can carry on playing records. And every time that a record is played, this little solenoid here clicks in and pulls the teeth along one one click, one click is one credit and it will keep doing that every time a record is played until it gets to the end and it's run out of credits and it's time to put more coins in um, and that in a, is in essence how it works um, this one however is not quite factory original and um, beggars can't be choosers when you're looking for parts for like a 45 year old machine um, this 
little board with relays on it that does not look original um, it's old I would say it was probably put in in the 70s by the look of it but it's been messed about with we've got a wire hanging off here um, we've got some interesting wiring bodging going on there so I don't know quite what the secret is of this thing also um, this little actuator here it looks it's it's going through the motions it's not actually advancing the teeth forward at all and having had a look at some pictures there's a bit missing from it there should be a little bit that sticks up there to engage with the teeth and that's why it's not doing it properly I wonder if this was some sort of modification to make it run for free play maybe that's what these are for because there's no easy way to convert these things to run free play they're always designed to take your money that was kind of the point um, so until I know better what this circuitry does or doesn't do I think we're just going to go with it. I'll insulate things like that. I can see where this wire's come from. It's clearly been snipped from the top there, so I might stick that back on. I think what we'll do, we'll clean it up, we'll put it back in the jukebox as it should be and see what happens and we'll take it from there. But I suspect um, some amount of modification is going to be needed here. Okay, so it's not a particularly thorough clean up. It's going to get done better than that as and when the time comes. But I'm hoping that's just got enough of the gruff out of it that when it comes to putting power up it at some point soon, it'll at least do something. Um, we've got a credit unit in there, the motors have been serviced. All we're waiting for now is the play relay, um, which I ordered a while back and should have turned up over a week ago now, but we're still waiting on eBay for that one. Um, if it doesn't turn up next week, I'm going to borrow the play relay out of my other jukebox, which is a Rockola 477 Max. Um, different jukebox, same relay, so we'll borrow it and see what happens. And then we can plug it in and uh, see what kind of state this thing's actually in. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. We'll give it a go in part four.